Mo, you and I have embarked on a documentary, uh, which yes. we'll tell the world about soon enough. And I remember one of the reasons that we set out on this documentary was the premise that people are going to experience a certain amount of disruption um, and significant turbulence, you know, dystopia on the road to abundance. And they're likely to start experiencing that soon. We actually had very little of it during the last presidential election in the United States. Yeah. Uh, which was a surprise, actually, to both of us. I'm surprised. But yeah. things are are picking up. So, what are we likely to see in the next, you know, year or so that has you concerned? So, on the on the dystopian side, what predictions are you expecting to see? Uh, okay, I'll I'll take a stab at this. There are so many, but I think the one that is really uh, glaringly obvious is the dichotomy between power and freedom. So, so, so let me try to explain what is about to happen. Yes. If, if you look back in human history and look back at, you know, hunter-gatherer years, right? The best hunter in the tribe could use, uh, you know, could probably feed the tribe for a week more. And, and as a result, he won the favor of four ladies instead of one, right? Uh, and, and that was the maximum he could get. The best farmer uh, in the agriculture revolution could feed the tribe for a season more. And as a result, they got the estates and the, you know, and the properties and so on, and the land and so on. The best industrialist became a millionaire in the 20s. The best information technologist became, you know, a, a billionaire, right? And, and I think what is about to happen is that this tendency, the, the reason, by the way, of course, is that the maximum that the hunter used as an automation is a spear. Mm -hmm. While, you know, the farmer used the land and the industrialist used the factory. And the more automation that you hand over to, right, the more you go beyond that one person into a massive growth, right? What you're about to see is you're going to see trillionaires and you're going to see a massive concentration of power, right, in the hands of the platforms or the corporations that own our intelligence, our future intelligence, or the nations that own the most powerful autonomous army or the most powerful uh, form of industrial intelligence and so on, right? What that means is, is that you would normally have had those lords, if you want, or oligarchs, you know, celebrate abundance while the rest of us struggle. But that's not the world we live in. The world we live in for the first time is seeing a kind of, of, divergence that we've never seen before that is the result of what we spoke about with deep seek right you know now there is also along with concentration of power there is a massive democratization of power right mm -hmm. so a lot of people can use little tools to create biological uh, innovations you know in synthetic biology to create ai innovation to create a drone that can like uh, salim said you know, just find a specific person somewhere in the world, stand in front of their head and shoot a bullet, right? The, the mix of those two diverging dynamics of power is going to lead to the loss of freedom. And I think we are going to start to see quite a bit of oppression, uh, you know, that the West used to speak about in the past and go like, look at how China treats its citizens. I think the West is going to be implementing those very, very soon, right? All of the surveillance, all of the, of course, if there is loss of jobs, you're going to start to see UBI become a controlling factor. You're going to see, you know, for someone like me, for example, if I say something that upsets someone, my bank account can be blocked tomorrow, you know, with ease. Hmm? And, and I think that kind of, of oppression, if you want, uh, is going to lead into resistance that will lead into more oppression. And I actually don't see how uh, in the short term we can escape this new cycle, uh, a divergence of concentration of power between high concentration and high democracy that leads to a maximum amount of surveillance and oppression. Salim, what are your concerns about the near-term stressors and, and downside? I think those are absolutely the near-term stressors. The, the good news is the democratization is happening so fast that uh, it allows us to defend against those things. You know, there are already companies that can defend a, a, a sports stadium against a drone, atta a drone attack, et cetera, et cetera. I note that the Ukraine-Russia war is really being prosecuted by half a million drones, not really people. Um, and so we've already automated warfare to that level. 
the good news is mostly drones are fighting drones rather than people fighting people. Bad news is there's still a war and there's a lot of horrible suffering that's unnecessary to Mo's earlier point. I think that I think it's exactly right. The near term, uh, uh, just take the the kidnappings that may come up when, or the extortion that may come up when when somebody says, "Here's a voice of your daughter that's been kidnapped by us. Send us a Bitcoin, otherwise you don't get her back." And you don't know if it's real or not. Um, yeah. And there's that kind of short term because uh, the that arms race, the gap between the uh, the the you, there's always those incredibly creative elements. Uh, Mark Goodman writes about this in Future Crimes, where the bad guys don't suffer from ethical or regulatory or moral constraints, so yeah. they are much more creative, right? Um, I'll tell a quick story here. Um, he tells a story of a bank robbery in like Omaha, Nebraska, or someplace where the the gang swarmed the bank, and they were all dressed in construction outfits that robbed the bank. Bank manager calls the police and says, uh, hey, they were all dressed in construction outfits. Police go, well, that should be pretty easy to spot. Except what they'd done is they put an ad on Craigslist saying, if you want really good paying construction work, show up at this address at 9 a.m. dressed as a construction <laughs> worker. And there was a crowd of 800 construction workers outside and they melted into the crowd. They couldn't, they couldn't. So essentially the innovation and ingenuity coming, yeah. leveraging new technology for bad purposes is like near infinite, right? And we have to kind of combat that as we can. The good news is in today's world, that negativity is easy to spot. Um, and it's easier and easier to spot. But I totally agree with that near-term dystopian issue. No easy way of getting around it than just gritting our teeth and, and moving as fast as yeah. we can to create the benevolent use cases. 